Let's consider an important linear block code known as the NK Hamming code. The Hamming code is constructed by first beginning with the notion of Q check bits that need to be inserted into the message stream every, every K bits. So then we pin down the specific values of N and K based on the number of check bits. So we say there's always two to the Q minus one code word bits. So once we know N and Q, we also know the message length K. K is simply our total code word bits minus the check bits. The code rate for any, any block code is always K over N. Being a little bit more specific for the Hamming code, since we have K and N all defined in terms of Q, let's go ahead and make some substitutions here. So we know the value of N. Now I observe that these two are exactly the same so I can split apart the division there and conclude that the code rate is one minus this factor Q over two to the Q minus one. Well, if you think about that a little bit, as Q gets larger and larger, the denominator two Q minus one gets pretty big in a hurry. So we say that the code rate converges to one as Q goes up. That corresponds to 100% efficiency, so we would think of that as being our ultimate ideal code rate. Now I'll return to the notion of error control power of the Hamming code shortly. The way this works is we think of the message as being a message vector, and I'm representing that as a capital M, and the components of the message vector are called M1 through MK. Capital C is the check bits vector. We have a total of Q check bits in this vector. These are both row vectors. We say then the code vector X is calculated, or excuse me, is, is represented as the uh, combination of the message vector and the check bits vec vector. And this is how we make X. We have this thing called the generator ma matrix G. G is defined as an identity matrix. That would be a K by K identity matrix as one submatrix, and then the so-called P or parity matrix as the other submatrix. I'll come back to P in a moment. Now we've got all these matrices and vectors flying around. It's, it's I think very helpful to try to keep straight the various dimensions of these. Since X is essentially the concatenation of these two vectors, this is a one by, you could call it K plus Q, but we know that that's the same thing as the code word length N. Now here we have uh, definitely K for the vertical dimension, we need to have a better handle on what this parity matrix is all about. The parity matrix is K by Q. That is, it has K rows of Q bits each. Again, K, K plus Q we understand to be the same thing as N. All right, we're almost there. We just need some way of trying to pin down what is meant by the actual values for the P matrix. It's simply a collection of Q bit words where each word has a minimum Hamming weight of two. We would say it has to have at least two bits that are one. You can arrange these in any particular order that you like. Now here's the good part. The code vector is calculated very simply as the message vector times the generator matrix. So we're doing a matrix multiplication 
to form our code vector. Now let me touch again on that idea of error control possibilities. For Q, that is the number of check bits, check bits greater than or equal to three, turns out that the minimum Hamming distance is always three no matter what. So it's possible to improve the code rate arbitrarily, but the uh, minimum Hamming distance is always three, so therefore the error control capabilities are always fixed. To make this a little more tangible, let's consider specifically a 7-4 Hamming code. Uh, another nomenclature for that would be to refer to it as a rate 4 sevenths code. So do some quick conversions from the choice of three check bits. And we see again that the rate is just above 50%. So thinking back on that definition for the G matrix, it's a K by K identity matrix concatenated with a P matrix. So we know that K is four. So we need a four by four matrix, which is the identity matrix. So that's diagonals are ones, all off diagonal elements are zero. P matrix in general is a K by Q matrix, so that would be a four by three matrix in this case. And we simply, in some sense, arbitrarily populate the P matrix with ones and zeros, provided that each row always contains two or more ones. All right, so we say that this is a four by seven matrix. Now let's consider a specific choice for a message vector. So imagine that the, the message we're trying to transmit for the specific block is 0110. So we know that's one of 16 possible messages that could be transmitted. Now expanding the matrix product there a bit. It's a, probably useful to just make sure that the dimensions line up. So the inner dimensions match, the outer dimensions then tell us the result is going to be a one by seven. Now another critical feature here is to ensure that we're using modulo two addition. And we'll see how that plays out in a moment. Now if it's been a little while since you've done matrix multiplication, I'll walk you through this in a little bit of detail. So we step through the, the vector and then the first column. The circle plus is the indicator for mod two addition. So we're taking the products and then adding them together. So the first result, since all the products are zero, you add them up, you get zero. Again, step through going down the second column, we find that we had one and so on and actually when you think about it since we're really multiplying by an identity matrix we expect to get the same message all right let's turn our attention to results dealing with the p matrix so again i'll expand this in a little more detail we would say that as you step through the row vector m and then go down this column of the g matrix we would write it out as uh, the expression here. Now, zero times zero is zero, one times one is one, one times zero, zero, and so on. Adding zeros doesn't do anything for you. Now we see that one plus one is zero. Again, this is because we're doing modulo two arithmetic. So think of it as if we did one plus one with conventional arithmetic, we would have two. But if we took two and divided by two, we would have a remainder of zero. So that's the idea of mod two arithmetic. Actually, another way of saying that would be simply what, what, we're, what you're used to doing for binary arithmetic. 
So I'm kind of illustrating this fairly quickly. At, at this point, if it seems like it's going too fast, simply pause the video and study it a little bit more at your leisure. All right, so there's our code word X. So we can identify the original message. Then we identify these as being the two, or excuse me, the three check bits that have been calculated by our generator matrix. Now, that was an illustration for a single message, single message vector. What happens though if you're, imagine you're doing a big stream of messages? Well, turns out that we can simply promote our M vector into a matrix. So we say that if we had a one by K for a single message, let's go ahead and make that some arbitrary vertical length. And uh, let's call that W for the number of message words. And so if that's a W by K matrix, the G matrix is the same and that produces what we need.